magic and witchcraft, which is uh, Lucifer. No matter how sweet it looks, no matter what tradition it comes out of, no matter what ethnicity wants to claim it, magic by any other name is still the same. The rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Renegades of this time and age. Okay, renegades of the atomic age. To appease their wrath and keep them from attacking the tribe. They act as ambassadors between the tribe. This is what the shamans and the kings would do as the middlemen who work with these spirits. Beings, demons, aliens, whatever you want to call them to make yourself comfortable. But the bottom line is the shamans and the priests and the royalty would all make deals with these entities. And of course, you know, the booty for the deals would be the people. And so, for thousands of years, you've had kings and shamans, high priests and wise men and royalty, all collaborating together, conspiring together with the spirits that give them power to keep the people under mind control or to keep the people under some form of control. This is the tradition of royalty. No matter where it's from, because royalty was taught to mankind by the fallen angels. It's not be done. It's because you like it, because it looks like you, you know, that does not mean that it's not out to do you harm. Then get past that, because it sounds good, look good, taste good. The devil knows what you like. He's going to give it to you in the form that you can digest most easy. A lot of brothers didn't get into the alien thing until Africa Bambada and the Zulu Nation and their imagery and Planet Rock, which was of course borrowed from George Clinton, the Parliament Funkadelic. It will look more at that. Okay. Now, they, the priests and shamans, act as ambassadors between the tribe and the demon spirits that oppress them. The modern day shamans and wizards are also griots to a degree. The storytellers and the keepers of tradition. And they use fallen angel given technology in order to manipulate vibration, frequency, harmony, and magnetics into a hypnotic force that compels individuals to explode with energy and to react in a variety of ways, including anger and rage. And let's not forget confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Let's look some more. That was credible. This is the uh, cover for Africa Bambada and the Soul Sonic Force. Now, we talk about how superheroes are really nothing but representations of what? And this album cover is a direct ripoff of a Marvel comics or DC kind of stuff. You know, so like Marvel. Showing and proving that someone behind the scenes is making these connections, even if you just thought it looked sweet. Hello? I mean, you can choose not to think. You can choose not to see certain things. You can choose to sweep those that are wrong. You can choose to only see it in a perspective that makes you comfortable. That's your choice, free will. But you should choose the truth. It'll make you free. Look some more. So we say, like these other high priests that we've been talking about, such a modern high day, such a modern day high priest is Africa Memba. No coincidence that he names his nation, the Zulu Nation, after this tribe of warriors. Now again, this was a gang called the Black Spades in the Bronx, who became the Zulu Nation. Now yes, black awareness and uh, 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 social consciousness was a big deal in the late 70s, mid late 70s especially. But not so much so that you would organically see all of the black street gangs begin to take this turn into being both more politically aware and appearing to have more awareness of occult symbolism. Who did this? How do these young brothers and sisters from the streets who just wanted to get together other times and form community organizations and then in other times to get together in order to police those who are policing them? How do those organizations turn into gangs and then turn into dope gangs and then turn into 
what appears to be a social political organization is the Zulu Nation of Africa Bambada 501c3. Let's continue. So such a modern day high priest is Africa Bambada, also a student, follower, and avid supporter of Black Karate. You did so, see him throwing up to uh, Manu Kornado, which is called the Devil's Horns by Layman. Okay, but uh, definitely, Bambada was an avid supporter and follower of Black Karate, AKA CIA operative, and Masonic Grand Wizard of high titles, Dr. Malachi Z. York. Undoubtedly, he is a member of the ancient order of Melchizedek, a secret fraternity within the Wapu. Now we're talking about African Bond. Certainly, he would be up in those ranks. I know people that didn't have anything who had joined the ancient order of Melchizedek. Okay? And that order was nothing but a recruiting ground for the Temple of Set. Again, see these Egyptian things, they make you think Egyptian is all good. They even say, you know, hey, if it was Egyptian and then it was commission. Commission was up and it was all good. They plan off your pride, it's no job in your David. But to look into it. Something is all good. How can it get turned bad? Hello? Oh. Let's continue. So Nwapu, the ancient order of Melchizedek, is not but a, a, a recruiting ground for the temple of Set which was headed up by Michael Aquino, who had been busted, accused, and, you know, many believe, of messing with young boys. Same thing that just happened to happen to Dr. York. Dr. York is under the Temple of Set. Admittedly, he is a member of the Temple of Set. Dr. York and, and uh, his order, the ancient order of Melchizedek, did a ceremony in Washington, D.C., in which they bragged about the power that they were able to call down because lightning was striking the monuments and whatnot. They were charging up those things. They were invited there to Washington, D.C. to do the ceremony because behind closed doors at that time, York was seen as a witch with skill, skilled warlock among their order, and a very skilled and important disinformationalist because much like Africa Bambada, his disguise of being so pro-black and for us, you know, listen to Africa Bambada's, <laughs> listen to his retorts, you know, it sounds so fake and rehearsed. You know, peace and blessings to all the universal people of the world. It sounds like really something he was brainwashed into believing when he was young. And I believe that's what happened. Let's get to that part too. Believe that after Bambada was a gang member, like many, during that time he was approached with an offer that they should have refused. And I believe that Bambada knew that he would be used. And also that Bambada was taught. Just like you see a vice lord's folks, GDs, you wonder who taught them that they actually crack open books of occult symbolism on their own, uninspired by anyone. Where do these ideas come from? These high and lofty minded ideas that really are exclusive to the secret societies of the world. How do they trickle their way into some kids from the Bronx? Because the powers that be know something about law line, the ley line, the law, the book of the law, as in Crowley. But they, they understand something about certain places. They know about the desolation for many generations and how those places will be the fertile ground from which the fruit of the new prophets and ministers and mighty men of valor, you know, they're going to rise up from out of community generations. Uber even spoke of that in the Cointel Pro papers about his fear of a black Messiah. Okay. Now, so you have the Temple of Set, Michael Aquino, Military Brass. You have up under that, you have Dr. York, the Wapian Nation, the entertainment um, luminaries were at one time under Dr. York from the RB ones to the funk ones to the hip-hop ones. Let's say that. One time, 
time I knew him, Buster Rhymes, Erica Badu, Dre 3000, you know, a lot of your influence, CeeLo, and look how he started to dress. Okay? Similar to what you saw with Bambada and So, again, these secret fraternities are places and are recruiting grounds for other Luciferian orders where they traumatize young men on the norm. Alistair Crowley said in a British paper, and, uh, you know, of course, because of his image of being such a psycho and a loon, we are told it was never explored and no one took it seriously. <laughs> but Crowley said one year he, he uh, buggered, according to his language, meaning he had sex with and then murdered over 150 young women. He was into really trying to draw forth what he believed was the strongest demonic powers by doing the most abominable acts. And this is passed down. This is taught throughout the brotherhood. The molestation of children is most abominable to the Messiah out of his own words, out of his own mouth. So when they're doing this, they're not only disrespecting God's creation on its most innocent and pure level, but they are also disrespecting the direct commands of the Messiah. To suffer not the children and to be like them. So, you know, when uh, Dr. York's charges first came up, it was 72 counts of everything the one that stuck most, but was believed least was that all they did was take kids across the state line to take them to Epcot Center, which he told us in the year 2001 what to expect was a mind control center. And he admitted to taking the children there. So that's his nail in the corner. Why would you take the children somewhere you told us in one of your most famous scrolls was a mind control center if you're not mind controlling the children like your student, Africa Bambada? But let's continue. Let's look a little bit more at this thing. That's the sound. Manu Coronado wore the devil's horn sign. Found its way into rock, funk, football, Texas Longhorns, and even street gangs. Black Spades was a notorious New York gang headed by Bambada in the mid-70s. Reference just ice is going way back. Where he says going way, way back to the going way, way back to the early days of 75 and the black spades. Just ice was sweet. That's the first brother I ever seen with a grill. But I mean, you know, we learned so many things about this during our youth, and just like anything else that mind controllers and brainwashers and programmers want to stick to you. Is best taught to you in your youth. The nostalgia of it, the memories, helps to keep it in a romantic place in your mind. You romanticize about it, you fantasize about it. Some of you, you know, even are delusional about it, confused about it. Spend so much time trying to rap and trying to rhyme and trying to make uh, music that. You have forsaken all of the things, including forsaken your right and your ability to check things out for yourself, to research where signs and symbols come from, to find out about the roots of witchcraft, to find out why is it really called black magic, okay? It's beyond the fact that, you know, they try to make you think that there's a good magic and a bad magic and a bad magic is black, but it's deeper than that. It's that they realize, all secret societies realize that the first and most potent form of sorcery was given to the kings of the earth, Psalms 2 and 2, who were the first civilizations, Babylon, Sumer, Kemet, Egypt. And those first kings of the earth were given witchcraft by the fallen angels. Now, let's let's look into this thing. So now this is the foundation. Okay, don't say uh, 
Grandmaster Cass or, you know, you have a lot of originators and pioneers and different people, Cold Crush Brothers, that would be called pioneers by those who, quote unquote, are heads, hip hop heads, crack heads, weed heads, and hip hop heads. But hip hop heads in general won't just flat out say Africa Bambada is the father of hip hop. We know there were a lot of people involved. And for the devil's usual way, he puts his flunkies, his peons, out on Front Street. The people that you see, the faces that you see, the politicians, there is peons out on Front Street doing his bidding. Well, I maintain that the same was done in this game called hip hop. The adversary had agents, ministers, if you will, who had been taught the Luciferian way, African style. So they, they didn't even know it was Luciferian. But they were taught that way, shown the magic mantras, of, excuse me, yes, the magic mantras and mudras that would become the hooks and the hand gestures of iconic golden era and foundational hip hop. Africa Bambada is behind foundational hip hop. It is no sense in arguing that the most influential, powerful, and the deepest crew in hip hop worldwide is the Zulu Nation. The Zulu Nation was swallowing up all kinds of crew. The native tongue swallowed up by the Zulu Nation. Swallowed up by the Zulu Nation. In other words, the Zulu Nation became that crew that had the juice and the official okay, the connection, the power, the name, and the fame to be the flagship crew for the culture. Can we say that? So when folks is talking about hip hop culture, they can invite out Africa Mount Bada and the Guinea Nation. They can play it off like you know, they have 501c3, some kind of community organization or something. And Bambada can get paid of something he was, uh, you know, proud of because he was originally a black spade a gang member who was taught this way. And this way then turned into a cult. Sure. And we call the hip hop culture. Four elements, all involved. Break them down real fast. We're going to go more into this in the uh, new songwriter statement. We're going to really get down into classic era hip hop and the funk. The real funk, maybe. But you have graffiti, which is about demons watching. The demonic possessed young men who, you know, just wanted their feelings expressed. You understand? We know the stories that were written by the liberals who were writing about hip hop first. I remember because my auntie, who would, you know, she, she was up on pop culture. As hip hop crept into pop culture, and she saw I liked it, she started buying me the books. The book called The Talking Drum. You know, all these books relating hip hop back to uh, its African origins, but not relating its African origins back to its pagan origins. Not dealing with the fact that, hey, everything in Africa ain't holy, baby. Like everything over here in America ain't holy, baby, but you got some people in some places who have believed the hype. They believe the good spin. They believe what is advertised about America, what's promoted. Same thing about Africa for y'all, brothers and sisters. Look at coming to America. Although it was supposed to be a parody, and, and I'm I'm sure that Eddie Murphy knew that uh you know, he was going over the top with certain things. That's what parody does. He can't present that live. Big on parody. But at the same time, you saw too this vast difference between what folks think of Africa and what Africa really is. And if you look at how him and Arsenio was dressed throughout uh, the early parts of the movie where they were still in their royal guard, especially, um, it looked a bit Masonic to me. 
So the more you begin to look at these kings of culture, and the more knowledgeable you are of certain signs and symbols, you need to know what was said about the Sumerians, the Egyptians, the Meshians, the Babylonians, outside of those who love them, outside of Egyptophiles. Okay? Like you need to hear things said about hip hop outside. You know, from just those who love it. Elder uh C. Lewis, I always call his name wrong. But the elder obviously wasn't well versed on the finer points of the culture. And so therefore he could go harder in a certain direction. Well guess what? Our God is a God of perfection. He's gonna make sure that there's balance in order to bring correction. So now the balance is this. I was knee deep in the midst. Let's continue. So, so, so there may be some things that I catch that was missed. Graffiti, demons watching. The young men paint the paintings, the big eye paintings on the buildings that are eyesores to some and works of art to others. You would never get 100% agreement that it's a work of art because that's somebody's building who did not get a choice of what color they wanted that building. Perhaps they painted that building a particular color and did not want it to be none other. And then someone comes along and puts their idea on it, although they don't own it. How you like it? I come to your house and paint it like I want to paint it. So there's a rebellion spirit in that. Rebellion is as the spirit of witchcraft. So where you find a rebellion spirit, you will find witchcraft lurking, hiding, in the mix. So graffiti, uh, I know you heard uh, um, Brother Ramirez, I believe, from the Bronx, I believe, uh, his testimony, he, you know, he broke down the graffiti. From the front of Bronx, and he came out of witchcraft. He understood what the unknowing and unwilling vessels for demons did not. You're just a vessel, you're a young buck. You ain't learned yet. Baby Bear Square. Baby Boy. Break dancing. The trance spell of break dancing. You see them do the Egyptian motion with their arms and, and hands. Okay? The hieroglyph motion, like you see in Walk Like an Egyptian. You remember Mesa, her time in y'all. 42 years old. I know this music. Okay? I had records. I had Boogie Don Bronx. Man, perish and cool by who? Cooler than the water in the swimming pool. Dating myself, but I'm there. Showing you, I'm, hey, I'm authentic. So, of course, the, the trans spell. You see the same thing in voodoo, where you see, uh, 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 you know, you have seen depictions of the practices of the believers in voodoo worshiping themselves into a frenzy through the dance. The movements are aggressive. Bold, prideful and sexual. Let's continue. DJ promoting the spell. DJ, well, what is he playing? What are you playing? What are you playing? What do you promote? Okay, what's popular, man? Case closed. Promoting the spell. Repeating the spell. Making sure the spell sticks. Play the spell two and three times throughout the party. Play the one spell, put on Beast to the Rhyme. But F the police. Make everyone fight. So promoting of the spell and the distributing of the spell, through the, the distributing of the spell also through the DJ. DJ is playing mixtape. Let's continue. The mixing moves. Rapping, the spell of spelling, chanting, incantation. Rain Man personified, coming down over you, giving you the words. You don't even know where they came from. Freestyling in and of itself. Now, again, there's always two ways to look at things. We have 720 degrees. 360 degrees of positive, 360 degrees of negative, according to metaphysicians. Okay, so they try to say, although they do not, they try to say that they want to look at the entire thing as the devil intended and the entire thing as God intended. Because ultimately, God is in control. 
and to the pure, all things are pure. And there were a lot of pure and innocent young brothers, hence like the ones that are coming out now, who were just following their big brothers, following their uncles, following the OGs in the hood. Okay? And they, they had no idea where they were following them. It was not a path that was good. They took them down a left-hand path with funky beats. Fresh maneuvers. New ways to rock your clothes. Now the fifth element, which was a club here in Detroit, hip hop club. Fifth would be the spirit. Now ask yourself, what spirit is it under? Now did God balance it out? Is it true what the devil meant for bad, the Lord turns around for your good? Is music itself demonic? Of course not. Scriptures and Psalms prove that it's not. The devil cannot create, but he can imitate. Hip-hop is an imitation of something that we have scarcely seen the true manifestation of yet because God's children have not taken over the set. Because again, a form of music is but a form of music. To do poetry, to rhythm, in and of itself cannot be sinful. It's about what the poetry is about, the spirit that's behind it, the fifth element. Now, in, in hip hop's beginning, we had Latins and Blacks primarily in control, especially in the Bronx. Okay? Now, like us, let's look at something else. You, know, you, had, you had a lot of ethnicities and nationalities involved, okay? Nationalities from certain histories and backgrounds, ironically, and nationalities with certain ties to certain spirits more so than others. For instance, among the brothers and sisters, of the Cuban persuasion. Sometimes it has been my experience in having family there. Okay? Brother from another mother and grandmother as well. Cubans often think they are only being proud of their heritage by continuing to practice something here. Or, you know, other ancient pagan traditions alongside Christianity. So it is a good idea. It is a very good idea and a wise thing for those who are inclined to look up the origins of things to really study the Mason. And really just for any awake brother or sister that's aware, you need to study the masonry and you need to study the symbolism. At least do a basic study. At least have a basic working knowledge. Because a lot of the things that you've seen paraded in front of you as hip hop, b boy stance, for instance, you know, the titles, you know, these grandmaster, these titles show the Masonic links and origins of hip hop from the very beginning. But the Masons, they grabbed the gangs and pulled them in. They taught them the things of the brotherhood. Now let's look some more here. They later formed the foundation, the Zulu Nation, later formed the foundation. The Black Stains, Spades later formed the foundation that would become the Zulu Nation. Notice the hand sign. Gang leaders with great ambition and criminal leadership potential were invited, oftentimes upon arrest, upon the notoriety, getting notorious in the hood. Then the uh, detectives would want to holler at that guy. He's the influential man. Okay, and the detective is the man with the Sonic Brotherhood shape, hand to hand. And so, oftentimes, what you would find is that they would zero in on the leader of a movement. And so, what you read, you know, they considered gangs movements at the time because they didn't understand exactly where they were going to end up. So, they wanted to give them a destination. Hip hop became a huge part of that. Now, again, gang leaders with great ambition and criminal leadership potential were invited upon arrest. To learn from the occult power and knowledge of the so-called occult. Okay. With only a degree of knowledge, which is actually only information, if you only have a degree of knowledge, holding up the one, like uh, Malcolm X does in the iconic photo where he holds up the one upside his face, is showing you first degree. Okay, same thing Bambada's doing in this picture that's 
blending or fading into the next picture coming up. So with only a degree of knowledge, which is actually only information, on the first degree, they only give you basic information. It is as you climb up in degrees that you begin to realize that you've gotten yourself into something satanic. Don't know in the beginning, otherwise you wouldn't go in the beginning. You wouldn't keep going up the steps. Okay, but the gang leader is let back out on the streets with his new information. Oftentimes with a bag of work on him as well. Bobby Seale reported that he told Huey that the party was over when Huey suggested after being freed and recruited that they use drugs to fund the revolution. This tactic, this tactic is even reflected in the watered down plot of Van Peebles Panther movie. The best proof is spelled out in the Cointel Pro papers where tactics such as this are all but spelled out in black and white. The Gangster Disciples, for instance, have made their Masonic connection clear in a famous YouTube video dissing Rick Ross for falsely claiming membership. They appear to be inside of a lodge and are all rocking their Masonic jeans. The folk in other Midwest gangs feature hexagrams, pitchforks, and pentagrams in their graffiti. Proof positive. The gang Masonic connection. Let's continue. New direction. This symbol. According to Zechariah Sitchin's series on the 12th planet, this symbol looks like the ancient Sumerian symbol or the black headed The Sumerian priests, like Dr. York, taught their followers to worship the Anunnaki as their god. The Anunnaki is another reptile or serpent race, coincidence or coincidence. So the Zulus, like most tribes, did not just make pictures of themselves and revere those, they made pictures of what they considered to be their gods. And the, that was their symbolism. That's what you find often. Okay? That's why you look at those African statues and say, well, that don't look like no brother I ever seen. Not just a stylized thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is also where the, uh, the uh, blackface uh, imagery comes from. And also on uh, the beach uh, I think they were native song. I know they were down with Dr. York because at the end of the song Peach Fuzz, Peach Fuzz, he said something like, uh, you know, I don't eat no pork because I'm trying to be smooth as my man Dr. York. Dr. York all in and throughout classic hip hop from its foundation or from its strongest position being Zulu Nation. Uh, Ice Cube and Brother Jay had a, a beef at one time. That would have been a good battle. X Clan dropped a couple lines on him. He dropped a couple lines back. And then the Zulu Nation was brought in to squash that. Same thing happened with Cube and Karras One, I believe. And uh, I think it was Karras One and PM Dawn as well. So Zulu Nation has also played this political role in hip hop. Okay, let's, let's continue. Which, of course, like the Masons, supposed to look like it's all good, it's promoting peace and unity in the community, when in reality it's about monopoly. Let's continue. It ain't slow. You can get it if you want to. Here's more depictions of the gods of man, the demons of man. Here's a Sumerian and Babylonian era god and the royal host. Remember, it was the royals, just like a further story of more no trip into the supernatural. The royals, the highfalutin people, just like in the movie The Game or in The Believers, you know, they are the ones who are brought into this practice, into this game, this religion, if you will. And they are shown that in order to get to the top of the hill, they need the help of these extra dimensional beings. And that has been passed down not just through politics, ladies and gentlemen, but through entertainment. That's why the entertainers are into the conjuring that they're into. Let's continue. This is from the Enuma Elish, Gilgamesh. Here you see the Mother Goddess representation. Wings here, tribute being brought to her by the kings of the earth. It still goes on today. Lucifer can disguise himself either way. It goes both ways. Mother goddess, or as some other pagan god. 
needs me, this guy. And do his work without your interference. You see? You don't even recognize that it's a You think it's a myth. Ancient Babylonian Sumerian depiction of the original mother goddess, the horror of Babylon called Inanna, Isis, Semiramis, and Ishtar or Ashtar, among others. You see the trip. Here, of course, you know you hear about the bull god. The worship of the bull god, the horned god, the stag god. You see it as Aries, you see it as Taurus. Kid Rock has a song with one of the Maddens called I Am the Bull God. What is it about? The horns are symbolic of being rebellious, warlike, and stubborn, also double minded. The two horns representing the two pillars of the two sides of man, the dark side and the light side, which is the Masonic belief. You find them on the bull god depiction. Okay? It's about being rebellious, warlike, warlike and stubborn. Rebellion is at the center of this crowd. You find them on the Baphomet. The same horn. You find them on the depiction of the devil. But they are also seen on the reptilian archives at the highest ranks. And depicted on representations of the serpent and the gargoyle and other malevolent monsters of supernature and myth. Therefore, devils are drawn with him on their end. Been drawn that way. Okay, let's look at some more. Okay, let's look at some more. Okay. Let's see the horns on his head and the horns on his hand. Always giving tribute again to these rebellious gods of civilization. Of course, the idea is not original. The Dambada in his style of dress, reminiscent of Son Ra and George Clinton. X Clinton. What did they all believe? What did they have in common? Was it simply pride? in their quote-unquote heritage. Oscar Bambada is credited as a hip-hop pioneer, the leading figure and head representative, even above Karis one in terms of reverence, and he is called its God Father. True to their nature, the fallen created a hybrid using music and technology. It would be received begrudgingly and accepted slowly over years and years of wearing away our natural frequency and harmony with each other, the world we inhabit, and the creatures we shared with. Both aspects of the spirit realm and the supernatural world were at work, however. In other words, the devil has a purpose and God has a plan. Okay? God always is working even when all you think you're seeing is the double at work he knew that that music would call his very special young one he isolated us insulated us and made sure that despite the devil's best efforts all of us could not be brainwashed and overcome overtaken enchanted by this new musical form of magic that has been taken over by the powers that should not be. If we want to talk real about it, we're no longer in control of this quote unquote culture. Who controls the cult now? Continue. See the machines of hip hop, changing the sound of music. Prince, remember the Jet Magazine was complaining about rap when it first Busting through the scene and his record sales were suffering. He ended up having to get him a rapper too for the new part generation. But at first, he was talking about how it's not really music. There's no melody. There's no harmony. So how can it be music? But you had scientists behind it, baby. Not just secret societists, but scientists like Kurzweil. 
sound wizards and scientists rolling, core. You saw certain numbers and letters, i.e. the 808, the 909, the board and backwards, the SP-12, and certain last names from certain families and tribes became synonymous with this electronic music form. They would be essential in shaping a sort of non-musical music. Stripped from the nutrients and benefits that it feeds the soul when it's in an uncorrupted state. It became the most powerful non-music music in the world. I mean, I mean we're just being for real here. There's some things we don't like to say. Look at this. Then, of course, there was craft work. The German technology and occult mind control symbolism found in their imagery, work, and lyrics tells all, not to mention their name, witchcraft working. They were a factory, all right. Their overly synchronized and syncopated sound would be the basis for many early breakdance hits, and it contained the blueprint to the way sampling would be done for years after numbers and tour de France. Surprisingly, both those songs and other uh, craft work hits crossed over into R&B station playlists and New York nightclubs, a hotbed for mind control and behavior modification experiments, where young, often detached, drugged up, and uninhibited potential test subjects can dance and drink themselves into a trance, and then can be easily taken advantage of and have the whole experience wiped from their memories. Black I don't know what happened last night at the club. Craftworks members were involved in experiments and studies at the European University, and they had the technical knowledge of electronics and harmonics that enabled them to build and refine their own instruments. Did you know that? 